I got two words for you, Bishop Sycamore. If you haven't heard about this team or the scandal they pulled off, I recently made a video talking all about it, but if you don't want to watch that, I'll give you the brief run through. To make a real long story short, Bishop Sycamore was a fake high school program. This was a school that didn't even physically exist. It was a online school that was supposed to be this quote unquote powerhouse football program with many D1 recruits. It was also apparent that not only did this school not physically exist, their players didn't even have a practice field. To go along with that, going into their game that got televised on ESPN, they was 0-8 heading into that game and lost to IMG Academy 58 to nothing. Their head coach, which was leading this nonsense of a team who is also ironically their athletic director, currently has a active arrest warrant out for his arrest. Oh yeah, I can't forget to mention that most of their players, almost 95% of them, have already graduated from high school and their junior college dropouts. I could go on and on, like I said, I talked all about this scandal in the previous video. The best way to sum it up is this was something that you'll never see again and it's something out of a movie. And somehow miraculously with all that being said, this team managed to finesse their way on a national televised game on ESPN. As to how they pulled that off, I don't even want to think about it, but it's in the past. We can't change it. It is what it is. Today in this video, we're here to focus on some breaking news that's being released of how a former Bishop Sycamore player has exposed them. I am going to give you a warning. Some of the stuff I'm about to read and throw up on the screen, it has some vulgar language and this dude, he speaks his mind. The current players on the team, including the head coach, have not released a statement just yet. I'm sure there will be one in the days to come. There's also being multiple investigations going on with this. However, one of their former players did an interview with Complex Sports. Let's just get into it. The player in this interview who exposes Bishop Sycamore goes by the name of Aaron Boyd. Some key factors to note is that Aaron played for not Bishop Sycamore, but for COF Academy, which was previously Bishop Sycamore before they got shut down. COF Academy got shut down in 2018, and that's why they rebranded. Before he got into his interview, he said, Everybody that knows me already knows this stuff. It's just the fact now it's on a greater scale. I have something to say. According to Boyd, he played there his junior year of high school, which was the season 2018 through 19. As you can see in the screenshot, I will now be throwing up on the screen. This is Boyd, and this is in 2018. You can clearly see he's wearing his uniform that says COF. Boyd stated that this school found him by attending an Adidas All-American camp that he was at and they recruited him. They went on to say, why did you go there? What appealed you to that school? Quote unquote, at first they had like brochures, a plan. They sent me books with like stuff on how school was supposed to look, blueprints and everything. They told us we was going to be on Netflix. They recruited us telling us we were going to be on a show. They told us we're going to be the IMG of the Midwest. They lied to me and my mama. Ah, right there. A classic case of coaches lying to kids. In this example, we have high school coaches lying. I understand you got to do what you do to get recruits on your team, but come on now. Telling kids they're going to be on a documentary show like Netflix, that's ridiculous. The next question they asked, what was the campus like? Did they even have a building at the time? Aaron followed up, there was no building. All right, listen to this. This is the crazy stuff. This is what you want to hear. I first moved out there. We were staying in a hotel in Delaware, Ohio. We were staying there for like five months. For five months, we didn't have no housing. All the players came to find out we never paid the hotel. The school was writing them bounce checks. The head coach of Bishop Sycamore wasn't the head coach. He was like an athletic director. He was the dude that was behind all of it. He was writing bounce checks for everything, for everything. We never paid for anything. I assume that's where the fraud charges come into play. This coach was not only finessing ESPN, he was also finessing his way through life. Should I even give him the name of the coach? I don't think he deserves that. The reporter then said, I saw there was allegedly an arrest warrant for fraud charges. So, that's accurate to you? Boyd said, yeah, that's accurate. I didn't know what the warrant was for, but if it's for writing bounce checks, that's accurate. This man scammed the whole church. We had funding from a church. That's how we were doing everything from the beginning. 
you know, in life, there's certain boundaries you don't cross, you know. You can keep going and going and going. There's got to be a line. I think stealing from a church, that's crossing it. You want to know what's mind-boggling when you think about it? This is all that we know coming from this guy. I'm sure there was more stuff going on behind the scenes. The interviewer follows up, so what did y'all do for education? Quote unquote, we didn't go to school. We never went to school. I can't lie. They tried once. They took us to a community library. One day, it was already October. This season was about to be over. It was like at this point, well crap, I'm not going to school. Y'all haven't put me through school this whole time. And now this is where in the interview things start to get out of hand and really funny, at least in my opinion. How accurate was the report that they're bringing JUCO kids back to high school? That's accurate? Boyd says, bro, I don't know about JUCO kids, but I tell you I was 15 and everybody else was 19 to 20. I got videos on my phone right now. Whatever you want to see, I got videos of. People sleeping on the floor. We didn't have practice. We just went to games. You see how it said they played two games in three days? We really did that. We ain't practice. We just went to games. They were treating this high school football program like it was some rec league YMCA basketball league. This coach was doing the most to get away with things. You would think he would at least try to win a game here and there. The fact they went 0-9, it just mind boggles me as to why he even tried to do this stuff. Anyways, moving on, the reporter then said, Was there any times y'all built team camaraderie before going on the field? Aaron Boyd answers, We all lived in a hotel together for five months. We all moved in in July before the school started. From July to about mid-August, everybody thought it was legit because crap, we all thought we was just staying in a hotel because there was no school. We were going to practice at some nice practice facility. We had 10 coaches, one coach for every position. From mid-August to mid-September, we had two coaches left and a team mom because everybody found out they wasn't getting paid. There was one coach who stuck it out to the end because he had to. If he left, we would have had nobody. Then he said, so why didn't you just bounce? He followed up, Aaron saying, I left after my junior year, I went back to high school. I can't believe this interview's real. I'm going to believe Aaron Boyd, the player, the previous player in this 100% for the reasons that one, I have no valid reason to not believe him, and two, I'm not gonna believe Bishop Sycamore. We're almost done with this interview, just keep hanging in there. They said, is that what happened for most people? And they're referring to people leaving the high school. Quote unquote, most people were already out of high school so it really didn't affect him. Remember, most of the kids on this team weren't in high school, they were grown men. Also adding, I know me and this other kid ended up at rival high schools, that crap ruined a lot of crap, it's sad to see. I wouldn't say all the players are Juco, I know some kids that are seniors in high school and now their senior year is gone. That's how it was for me. My junior year was taken away from me. Everything I did my junior year didn't matter because I was on a fraudulent team. Quote unquote, did you have to redo your classes when you got back to school? He said, bruh, I had to come back and redo my whole junior year and I had to do it in time so I could play football my senior year. And last but not least, they asked him what's the craziest thing that happened while he was there, and here's what Aaron said. There's crap I could say, but I don't really want to. For the last month and a half, we had about 35 players. We moved into these new houses for that month and a half. We was all sleeping on the floor. We had to go rob Myers, Kroger's, Walmart, because that was the only way we could eat. I don't even know what to say about that. The fact that this coach wasn't giving these kids money to go get food and they had to steal to get food and provide for themselves. To top that off, they were having to sleep on the floor. Is there even words to describe this? This was something that's terrible. You had a coach promising kids they were gonna go to the next level, they was gonna help them get recruited, and they was even gonna be on Netflix. And none of it happened. This was a nightmare. The last quote that Boyd said is, It's crazy, but I can think of a lot of stuff that's crazier than that. Sleeping on the floor, doing all that, it didn't get to me. Dudes almost got stabbed in there. We had players from every borough in New York. Then we had players from inner city Columbus. That's where I'm from. Everything didn't mix, especially with no supervision. Wow, 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 well, there we have it. A former COF slash Bishop Sycamore player exposing the dark truth about this sorry program.
for the players, can you blame them? I don't really know if it's necessarily their fault. It's got to be more on the coaching staff and their head coach. He's the mastermind behind this plan. He's the one pulling all the strings and somehow pulling off all these miracles. From getting on to ESPN to writing blank checks, having his players not even have a legit school and also not a practice field, and then he's not even feeding them. What is going on? I was trying to think about it. At least for me, I think this is arguably the biggest high school football scandal of all time. We've seen college football scandals. That happens all the time. But for high school, nothing like this. I've said it a lot. I'm going to say it again. This is something that you only see in movies. It's 2021, which makes it even more unreal to think about as to how they pulled this off with the internet and everything, it's easy to prove that none of this was real. However, ESPN didn't do their research. This head coach has got to be one of the most manipulative people of all time. I'm still in shock. I don't really know what to say about all this. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. But with all that being said, that's going to wrap up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. If you know the channel, we done. Join the family. Hit that subscribe button and leave a like for more. And as always, let's be great. I'm out, yeah. Peace. Hope you have a good day.